guys, here we are in the acid base balance lecture and we're going to talk about three different things. We'll talk about buffers, renal compensation, and then respiratory compensation. But before we get into how you regulate and maintain pH homeostasis, let's talk about what, what is pH, right? So it, it's a measurement of what specific ion. That is going to be free hydrogen ions also known as protons. And I say free because some people see hydrogens in a, in a molecule and think that it kind of contributes to it. But once hydrogen is bound up into a molecule, it's no longer part of pH. So it's only a measurement of those free hydrogen ions. Any hydrogens that are inside of a molecule, part of a molecule, are not going to be part of pH. Okay, so the equation for pH is log one over the concentration of hydrogen ions. So anytime you see a bracket like this, that means that's the concentration of whatever's inside. And so uh, the other thing I'd like you to understand is if you have a one over something, that means it has an inverse relationship. And so what this means is as you increase the concentration of hydrogen ions, the pH is going to become smaller, okay? So it'll decrease. And as you decrease the concentration of hydrogen ions, the pH will increase, okay? So let's look at this number right here. So number seven, so pH of seven is considered to be neutral, and that is going to be the pH of pure water. And the reason it's neutral is because the concentration of hydrogen ions is going to be equal to the concentration of hydroxide ions, which is the OH negative. Okay, so that they're, since they're equal to each other, that is why pure water and pH of seven is neutral. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is this log part of the equation. The purpose of that log in that equation is to convert kind of scary looking numbers into much more easily manageable and workable numbers. Okay, so for example, water, pure water, the concentration of hydrogen ions in pure water is one times 10 to the negative seven molar, right? So that's a kind of scary number, but if you put that and put that into this equation, that creates a pH of seven. And so you get this wonderful pH scale with this beautiful, easy to look at, easy to use numbers. So if you increase the concentration of hydrogen ions, so now that you have more hydrogen ions than pure water, also you can also think of it as more hydrogen ions than you have than hydroxide ions. Okay, so more hydrogen ions, that's going to be a decrease in pH, and that's going to be called acidic. Okay, so acidic is an adjective that describes a solution. A solution is acidic. Now be careful because acidic and acid they are, are, are related but not quite the same. An acid is a molecule that releases hydrogen ions. So an acid is a noun and acidic is an adjective. Okay, now if you have fewer hydrogen ions than pure water, which means you have, you have more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions, that becomes basic or alkaline, okay? And your pH is going to increase from there. Okay, so again, basic adjective, a solution that is that um, it has uh, fewer hydrogen ions than pure water, that's basic. And a base is a noun, which is a molecule that binds to hydrogen ions. Okay, so make sure you understand what an acid and a base is because that's coming up pretty soon when we talk about buffers. Okay, so if you're looking at the pH range within the blood, okay, and again, the pH range of the blood is pretty much the pH range of the whole body because that's going to be redistributing all over your body. So the pH range for blood is about 7.35 to 7.45. Okay, so notice that it's slightly basic, but it's fairly neutral. Okay, so just slightly basic. And it's also a very specific narrow range. So the biggest question is why? Why does 
the pH have to be maintained within such a specific narrow range, okay? So um, think about what, for example, what happens when proteins are exposed to pH that is outside of their normal range? They begin to denature, which means that they lose their 3D shape. And when they lose their 3D shape, that is going to affect how they function. Okay, so no shape, no function, or loss of shape, loss of function. Okay, so that's one big reason. But also just in general, a lot of chemical equations are going to be affected by the concentrations of hydrogen ions. Okay, so if you go outside of those range, that's when the cells start to suffer. And if it's too far outside, that can re result in death. Scary. Okay, so now let's talk about well, how does our body maintain such a specific narrow range? There are three mechanisms to do so. We have the buffers, and the buffers are going to be in the blood. And we'll talk about what a buffer is in just a second. We have the respiratory compensation and the renal compensation. And remember, whenever we say compensation, we mean actions, responses that are taken to bring us back down, or not down, down or up to the normal range. Okay, return us to the normal range. Okay, so. Um, as I, I'm going to go through buffers first, but I think it's a good idea to just start thinking about, well, what does the respiratory system have control over? Okay, what aspect of respiratory system would affect pH? And then what does the renal system have control over? Because if you, if you think about these, these compensation mechanisms will be very logical. Okay, so let's talk about buffer. What is a buffer. So usually when we say buffer, what we're really meaning is a buffer system. Okay, so buffer is a system put into place to prevent changes in pH. Okay, so make sure that you stay within that specific narrow range. And when you have, and the reason I say it's a buffer system is because with buffers, don't, there's not one single molecule. What it is, is a, both an acid and a base that work against each other. They call that an acid-base conjugate pair. That's just a fancy way to say you have an excess amount of acid and an excess amount of a base, and they go against, they, they oppose each other to make sure that the pH does not change. So I really like to think of it like a tug of war that nobody wins. Everyone's just pulling as hard as they can, but you're, it's not moving one direction or another, okay? The other thing to understand is that the, to be a good buffer, those acids and those bases both have to be weak, okay? And what I mean by that is they, for example, a, a weak acid would only give off a little bit of hydrogen ions and not a whole lot. And a weak base would only bind a little bit of hydrogen ions. It wouldn't bind a whole lot. So you have small changes, right? So the whole point of a buffer system is to prevent large swings in either direction of the pH. And so you don't want to have strong acids and bases because that would make too much movement in either direction. You wanna have tiny little tweaks back and forth so that you stay within that very, 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 very narrow range. Okay, so 7.35 to 7.45, very specific, right? So we wanna have a weak acid and a weak base and they work against each other to prevent changes. Okay, so here, so this, this equation right here represents the most common, the most important um, buffer system in our blood. It's called the bicarbonate buffer system. And just looking at the equation, I want you to go ahead and think about, well, what would be the acid and what would be the base? Because if it's a buffer system, it has to have both a weak acid and a weak base. Now the acid one, well, that's pretty easy. It's right here in the name. This is called carbonic acid. And one thing I would like you to note is that it has a little extra hydrogen in there. Okay, so acids are gonna have lots of hydrogen because their job or their, 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 what they do is release hydrogen. So they'll have more hydrogen. 
Okay, so here is carbonic acid. And what it does is it releases hydrogen ions. Here's the hydrogen ion that is going to be coming off of it. And then what's left over is the bicarbonate. And so bicarbonate would be a base because bicarbonate can bind to free hydrogen ions. And when you bind to free hydrogen ions, you take the, free, the hydrogen ion out of solution. It's now part of the molecule. And so it's no longer going to be participating in pH. And so, what, so remember that a base makes the solution more basic, right? because it binds to those free hydrogen ions. Okay, so now let's, let's look at this part right here. So let's look at the relationship between carbon dioxide and pH. And first of all, where does that carbon dioxide come from? Because remember, I don't want you to get some narrow focus that you don't look at the bigger picture. The carbon dioxide is going to come from the production to, uh, come from the Krebs cycle and the transition phase of cellular respiration. So it's in the process of making that ATP that is then used to do cellular work. Okay, so tie everything together, right? Everything is all together. Okay, so the cells are going to be doing their ATP, and as they do their ATP, the carbon dioxide is going to be diffusing out of the cells and then into the blood. And some of them, some of that carbon dioxide, about 10%, will be um, combining with water. So most of this carbon dioxide will then go into, just reviewing the blood lecture, most of that carbon dioxide would then go into the red blood cells and do the exact same equation, but sequestered or kind of contained within the red blood cells so it doesn't affect pH very much. Okay, so let's look at the relationship between carbon dioxide. When the carbon dioxide comes in contact with the water, and again, the water just is the plasma, the plasma of the blood, mostly water, where they will combine together to create carbonic acid. Now, because carbonic acid is an acid, and what do acids do? They release or give up or dissociate and release that free hydrogen ion. And when you release a free hydrogen ion, what happens to pH? Okay, so the pH is going to decrease. So there is a relationship between carbon dioxide and pH. An increase in carbon dioxide will drive the equation in this direction, resulting in more hydrogen ions, which would then decrease the pH. And that is exactly why we don't want most of the carbon dissolved, carbon dioxide dissolved in the plasma. That's why it has to go into the red blood cells to do this equation. If we didn't, it would become way too acidic and we would all die. Okay, so, but you can have small fluctuations and that small increase would create um, a decrease in pH. Whereas a decrease in carbon dioxide, notice that these equations have two arrows on them. They can go in either direction depending upon current conditions. So if you have less carbon dioxide, that will then create a situation, an environment where it would, the equation is drawn in this other direction. Okay, so think of it sort of like pulling it down, like a teeter-totter, right? It's pulled down on this side and it'll go in that direction. Okay, so if you have a decrease in carbon dioxide, that's going to draw the equation to, in this direction and that's going to decrease the amount of hydrogen ions, which would therefore decrease pH. So that means that carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions are directly related to either, each other. What I mean by that is an increase in carbon dioxide makes an increase in hydrogen ions and vice versa, but it has an uh, inverse or opposite relationship with pH, and that's just because of the way that pH is, you know, the equation for pH, okay? So we have a, direct, a, con a net connection between carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. Okay, so make sure you're very, very comfortable with that, with, with this equation. It's not so much about memorizing the equation as really having a deep understanding. Okay, so relationships between carbon dioxide and the hydrogen ions, and make sure that you're comfortable with the idea that carbon, carbon, carbonic acid 
becomes bicarbonate and then bicarbonate becomes carbonic acid depending on the current concentration of hydrogen ion. Okay, so let's look at it as a buffer system. Okay, so if we have in our blood, we have an excess amount of both carbonic acid and bicarbonate. Both are always present. What changes is the relative amount of each. Sometimes people see this equation and they think it's all this or all that, and it's not. Okay, so what we're talking about is adjusting the relative amounts of carbonic acid versus bicarbonate. And they, again, they become each other. Okay, so if you have a situation where your cells start secreting more acids, that would increase the concentration of hydrogen ions. When you increase the concentration of hydrogen ions, if, there, if you did not have a buffer system, so for example, if you just took sodium hydroxide and you, sorry, not sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid and you just dumped it into pure water, what would happen? If you just dump it into pure water, you're gonna have a decrease in pH because of the increase in hydrogen ions. But what happens if you have a moderate amount of acids accumulating in the blood? What's gonna happen is because you increase the concentration of hydrogen ions, that'll make a situation where the bicarbonate comes in contact with those hydrogen ions more frequently. And when they come in contact with each other, they combine. Okay, so those extra hydrogen ions that you just added are going to be bound to, sequestered is the you know, fancy word for that, sequestered in the bicarbonate ion. And what does it become? When bicarbonate binds to the hydrogen ions that were added, it becomes carbonic acid. So the concentration of carbonic acid would increase, but would you have any net change in pH? No, you would not. Not a significant amount because you increase the hydrogen ions by adding the acids, but then you decreased it back down by binding those extra hydrogen ions to the bicarbonate. Okay, so an increase and a decrease, but it's a wash and there's no net increase in, no net change in pH. So no net increase in hydrogen ions and no net change in pH. Good? Okay, let's try to go the other way. The other way is a little bit, a little bit more con confusing to look at. So what happens if you start secreting more bases into the blood? Okay, so for example, if you took, if you took a pure, you know, glass of water here and just start dumping in sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a very strong base because it has, it can release hydroxide group. Whenever you release hydroxide, that hydroxide will then go and bind to hydrogen ions in the solution, thereby making it more basic. Okay, so if you, if you add sodium hydroxide to an unbuffered solution, just like dumping it into pure water, you would see a decrease in hydrogen ions. And when you decrease the hydrogen ions, what that does is it decreases the affinity for the, that the, carbon, the carbonic acid has for the extra hydrogen and it will release more hydrogen ions, okay? So basically what you've done is you've drawn the equation in this direction. Okay, so when you decrease hydrogen ions, what happens is those lost hydrogen ions are replaced by the carbonic acid. So the carbonic acid will release more of the hydrogen ions, and what will it become? It will become bicarbonate. Okay, so the carbonic acid will, will release those hydrogen ions. So we lost our hydrogen ions, but we replaced them back up. So is there any net change in hydrogen ions? No, there's not. And so is there any net change in pH? No, there's not. Okay, so that is going to increase the concentration of bicarbonate and therefore allow for no net change in pH. Okay, so I just want to take one quick minute to make sure to, again, reiterate the difference between basic and base, right? So I know this is confusing for some people. 
Bicarbonate is a base, which means that it binds hydrogen ions, okay? So just because it's a base does not necessarily mean that the solution it's in is basic, okay? So think about it this way. The blood is relatively neutral, I guess slightly basic, but you still have bases in there and you still have acids in there. Okay, so you really need to kind of give a little bit of space between acid and acidic and base and basic. Okay, so um, email me if you have questions. <laughs> okay, I know that's a confusing idea. Okay, so let's go a little bit into some pH disorders and then we'll talk about how the respiratory and the renal system compensate for those pH disorders. Okay, so again, the buffer system, that's an immediate quick response, but if there is too much increase in acid or too much increase in base, such that the buffer system is overwhelmed, that's how you can get disorders. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video now, and then we'll, I'll come back and do pH disorders and then the compensation mechanisms that.